friend of Putin and also knows that Mr. Putin is a very powerful fellow. <laughs> and Mr. Medvedev is working through uh, very p powerful men called Silivokis, yes. who are all from the FSB. Which, so, is, I mean, which is a former KGB. Yes, I mean, so I would, I would not, Mr. Mr. Medvedev is a highly intelligent man. He's a good friend of Putin, and he sees no reason why he should mm. want to clash with Putin. And Mr. Putin will return to be president another day. I would say the probabilities are high. <laughs> but you also said in the speech that I read that their capabilities of Russia are limited. The capabilities are limited. Well, they've got enormous uh, a nuclear arsenal. But what else? Their army is uh, a very different army now. Uh, the Air Force, they're building new fighters, but I mean, mm. their Navy. It's, and their population is declining. AIDS, uh, alcohol, uh, drugs, and pessimism. If you, 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 every year more Russians die than Russians are born, because people are not optimistic in America. People are optimistic and say, right, I'll bring a child up into the, in, bring a child into the world. But when your life is so harsh, and from time to time it gets better when the oil price goes up, but that's only momentary. Mm. You have a different view of the future. So what's the point of this? What about Japan back to Asia? I think the Japanese need an overall. In terms of that political system? Yeah. And in terms of their acceptance of immigrants, their birth rate is one point, their fertility rate is just slightly higher than ours. We are 1.29, they're mm -hmm. 1.38. And they're shrinking. But we are a small population, so we are in. We can make up with any numbers from young, bright Indians, br young, bright Chinese, young, bright Malaysians, and all the people around the world, and some Middle Easterners. You, we now have Ukrainians serving in our army, our citizens. <laughs> they think Ukrainians in Singapore? Yes, of course. Russians too. East Europeans. And Britishers who have married our local girls. And, British women who mm -hmm. married Singapore men. But Japan does not want immigrants, so they are stuck. Today they have 3.2 working persons to support one adult. Mm. In 2055, they have 1.2 persons to support one adult. And immigrants has been America's strength. Absolutely. But mind you, immigration of the highly intelligent and highly hardworking, very hardworking people. Mm. If you get immigration of the fruit pickers, <laughs> <laughs> you may not get very far. Mm. I, I met some, a Chinese delegation recently who's here in the yeah. last couple of weeks, and I said to a very important member of the government, not at the highest level, but very important, what are you doing here? He said, we're trying to get highly educated Chinese. To go back? Yes. Yes, of course. To go back. Yeah. I said, well, what do you say to them? Say to them, you'll have opportunity, and I say to them, the homeland needs you. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah, that doesn't sell. What, what sell? will sell is you can leave any time you want and I'll allow your children special educational facilities, and all of you can keep your American green card or passports. And that works? Well, I'm not sure whether it'll yeah. work. But they'll go back and, and test the waters, some. But will you go back and stay? Maybe, because of the, you know, the older generation, they're emotionally tied up. But will your children stay? No. Their, their, their upbringing has been here, and they go back to China, and they say, wow, this is a very regimented society. Papa, I'm going back. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, there's no comparison. I mean, there are yeah. two, and there's chalk and cheese. Yeah. 
yes. between the two societies, especially for young children who can see how independent American children are and can grow up and be, become anything they want, beatniks if you like, or... <laughs> to use an old expression. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever in China, yes. you come out like sausages. Yes, exactly. So, so yeah. will the Chinese be able to say, one of the things that you point to in terms of this uh, relationship between this competition, you say China and the United States will have competition, mm. but they must avoid conflict. Yeah. No, I think both sides don't want conflict. They don't want conflict. Yeah. China wants to spend time focusing on its internal development, its no. economic development. China wants time to grow. To grow. If there's going to be any conflict, let's postpone it for 50 years. But inevitably, at some point, as China grows, it's going to want to be the dominant nation in the world because it'll have... But it is not going back to Tang China yeah. or Han China, where they were the only dominant power right. in the world. This time, they're going back to a world where there are several dominant poles that's as inventive and more creative than them. So we're looking at a multipolar world. Yes, absolutely. And we'll never go back to sort of the kind of thing that we had between the Soviet Union and the United no, States. No, no. That'll be the U.S., that'll be China. The Indians are going to be themselves. They're not going to be anybody's lackey. They may not be as big as China in GDP. And you also suggest they've got to develop a manufacturing cap capacity. Yes, of course. Uh, you're going to have. Europe will be an economic force. It will not be a strategic, political, or military force because they can't get together. The it, foreign it, policy. It's inevitable that they can never get together? I'm not saying it's inevitable, but if you look at them, there's still 27 different nations. I mean, they won't accept one language, <laughs> although they all use English as a second language. But you tell them that in Brussels you speak either French or English, or either your own language or English, which is what is actually happening in committees, they absolutely refuse. So how long will that dis take to disappear? I don't know. I think it may never happen. Take, a, take Singapore. Yes. You have said that you have to, Singapore has to maintain its relevance. Yes. It has to be a place that people want to invest in. It, it has to be a place, go ahead. It has to be a place that's useful to the world. Otherwise, it wouldn't exist. And that's what you had created since the founding of the modern city-state. Yes. We have made ourselves relevant to the world. And, and how will you maintain your relevancy? By keeping on changing. You cannot maintain your relevance by just staying put. The world changes. There are shifts in the geopolitics and the economics of the world. We've got to watch it, and we've got to ride it. You surf with the, as the surf comes this way, you ride the surf. We are keeping our links with America, with Japan, with Europe. They brought us to where we are. And you're not going to have to choose sides. No, no we, other nation will have to choose sides. We absolutely sides. refuse to choose sides. But we will, we will not choose sides between America and China or between China and, and India. But I just read today an announcement by your sovereign wealth fund. Yeah in Singapore yeah. of like over, what, $1.3 billion in new investments, none coming to the United States, going to China, to India, to Brazil, and I've forgotten where else. <laughs> it's just $1.3 billion out of $300 billion. It's just But less. none to the United States, no, mostly no. going to but what the they United call the Sta BRIC countries. Yeah, but the United States at the moment is in somewhat of a... Uh, unstable state. Is the dollar going to decline? What do you yes, think? it is cheap. But supposing you buy and the deficits grow and Ben Bernanke is unable, your federal, federal chairman is unable to draw enough liquidity out of the market and you've got hyperinflation. Mm. Wow! <laughs> it will go down and you've lost money. So everybody's hedging. And there's a very small So they're hedging edge. by looking at other places to... Yeah, but where, you tell me? 